Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Hagadex3, and welcome to Tech Saturday, episode 23, where today I'm giving you guys and gals a $600 AMD build. But if AMD is not your thing, I also have a $600 Intel build, so if you want to check out that video, you can click on it right here, or if you're on a mobile device, you can click the link in the description below. And as always, I will have a link to this build in the description. So with that all out of the way, let's get started. For the CPU, I went with the AMD FX4300. This is a quad-core CPU, clocked at 3.8 GHz. It uses the AM3 Plus socket and it has a TDP of 95 watts. So I chose this CPU for this build because it's a great CPU for budget builds. It's a quad-core CPU, so it shouldn't bottleneck the GPU. And the CPU uses the same socket as the 8350, so down the road if you wanted to, you could upgrade your CPU. But for right now, the CPU should deliver some great gaming performance, all for $104.99. For the motherboard, I decided to go with the MSI 970A G43. This is an ATX motherboard that uses the AMD 970 chipset. It has four DIMM slots and the max memory this board supports is 32 gigabytes and the max memory speed this board supports is 1866 megahertz. This board does have RAID support. It supports Crossfire but not SLI and it has six SATA 6 gigabyte ports and a USB 3.0 header. So I chose this board because you're getting a lot of great features for the price. You've got a lot of room to upgrade down the road with this board, which is something I always look for in a motherboard. And overall, you're getting a great budget gaming board with a lot of room to grow, all for $69.99. Now for the memory, I went with two sticks of Team Vulcan memory. So both sticks are 4GB in capacity, so in total you're getting 8GB of memory. And both sticks are clocked at 1600MHz. So there's not much I can really say about this memory other than it's reliable. 8GB of memory is more than enough for gaming and it's currently the sweet spot for gaming PCs right now. And this memory is only going to run you about $64.99. Now for the storage, I went with the Seagate Barracuda. This is a 1TB hard drive that spins at 7200 RPMs. So this is a pretty basic drive, but for gaming this drive should get the job done for you. And if you need to, you can always add another one of these drives for even more storage space in the future. And this drive is only going to cost you $59.43. And now for everyone's favorite part of a gaming build video, the graphics card. So for the graphics card, I went with the MSI GeForce GTX 750. This is a 1GB card that uses GDDR5 memory. It has a core clock of 1.06GHz and it has a TDP of 55 watts. And for the ports, it has one DVI-I dueling port, one HDMI port, and one VGA port. So I usually don't go with a card that only has one gigabyte of memory on it, but when I watched a couple of videos on this card, I'll admit, I was shocked at its performance. Now, yes, the 750 Ti is a more powerful card, but don't count this card out just yet, because overall you'll be getting a great gaming experience for only $122.98. Now for the power supply, I went with the Corsair Builder. This is a 500 watt power supply that is non-modular and is 80 plus run certified. So I went with this power supply because I trust Corsair's power supplies. And this power supply has more than enough wattage to power this system now and down the road for only $59.99. And finally for the case, I went with the Corsair Master Elite 430. So this is a ATX mid-tower case that has two front panel USB 2.0 ports two external 3.5 inch bays, three external 5.25 inch bays, five internal 3.5 inch bays, and the dimensions are 19.29 inches in length, 7.48 inches in width, 16.69 inches in depth, and the maximum GPU length in this case is 12.40 inches. So I chose this case because I like Cooler Master cases, especially for budget builds. And surprisingly, this is the same case that I used in my last build video. So, I guess all I can say is that it was so good I had to use it twice. And the price of this case comes out to $44.99. And that is the build, so the estimated watch that this machine will be using is 249 watts. And if you would like to purchase the hardware of this build without a copy of Windows included, your final price is $527.36. And if you would like to purchase the hardware and a copy of Windows 7, your final price is $617.35. Or if you would like to purchase a copy of Windows 8.1 instead, your final price is $617.34. 
And as always, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you hated it. And that is it, and I will see you guys and gals in my next video. This is your boy, Hagrid3, and I'm out. God bless.